for something to be called worthy, it has to have a fighting story behind it. As an artist in Uganda, I feel like it's 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 a it's a it's a part it's a part of me. It's a part that I have to play for the maybe the future artists that come after me. My name is Mwesu Gabrogan Aaron. I'm a visual artist based in Jinja. I tend to paint from my heart, from a pure point of view, because uh, I put in mind the fact that people have to understand what I'm painting. So inspiration comes comes from as little as the music I listen to, the people that I hang out with, my friends and family. In the end of it all, art, it's all about inspiring people. My artwork communicates about the issues in society, social, political issues, identity issues, uh, issues about legacies, and I pick from those, and then I, I translate them through logic and research. I translate them into compositions. And I combine charcoal and acrylic paint and come up with uh, a mixture of media to create a complete artwork. There is something special about color. You know, color brings in the vibrance. It brings excitement. It brings comfort. Yeah, so I, I like flat colors. That's why I use them a lot. Because to me, the abstraction, there's a way the abstraction relates to the real life. So I combine the abstraction of color and then the real life of, of drawing. During the lockdown, there was little or no movement and I had no access to the materials that I enjoyed using, the canvas, the paper. And then I had this constant urge to paint. I really wanted to come up with, to keep myself creative because we were out of school and we were just home seated. But I didn't have material. But then at home we had papers that they, were, that they were planning to throw away. But I intervened and told them not to because I, I thought I would use them in the future. So I decided to recycle them and create my own surface. So that's how I started and, and, and once I created the first piece, I really liked the process and I felt like I should carry on and I've not really stopped till now. So we are sloping down to my source where I collect the papers from. This is the first stage of my, of my process. Yeah, so this is the collection point and uh, these are the ones that I take back to my studio and chop them into small pieces and then I soak them for a few days so I start my process. After collecting the papers from the source, I bring them here and tear them into pieces. And I enjoy the tearing part because it's a major contribution to my process, tearing pieces apart and bring them back together in form of art. So after tearing up the papers, I mix them with water because it's easy, they easily absorb water once in pieces. And uh, I leave the water and the papers to soak for around three to four days. It depends on, on the softness that I want. This is the third stage. Once the papers have soaked for, for the days that I need, I then turn them into paper pulp. So now I'm going to drain out the water. I really enjoyed working with recycled paper because in the end of it all, I discovered that besides contributing to the issues of environmental conservation and waste management, it really speaks to me as an artist because it, it acts as a metaphor representing the turning of events from bad to good, from you being paper being useless to being useful. As artists, first of all, we have to know what we want. Do you want to do art as a career? Do you want to do it as part-time? So once you figure out that, that's how you begin the first step. And the next step is connecting to fellow artists, connecting to galleries, connecting to the people, because it's not a one-man job. Creating, creating the art is one thing, 
and putting it out there is another thing. And they are all, it's very difficult for an artist to, to play all parts. So I think that for now, uh, the art industry has really shifted from being, uh, I, I could say invisible, now it's visible because I feel like, because I've attended exhibitions and the turn ups are always more of the local people, of the Ugandans. Yeah, so Uganda as a country, I believe that the art industry is really growing because it's chasing the African, contemporary African scene because it has also risen during the lockdown. And uh, as Uganda, as East Africa, we are part of, of that. We've seen Ugandan galleries representing Uganda in, uh, in overseas exhibitions. So that is a success and we're also, I believe I'm also part of that journey. And I can't wait to see what's coming up.